CBS. I'm glad that you decided to come back for another day of Vacation Bible School. If this is your first time here, I am so excited you decided to join us. Everyone, make sure you comment below your name and where you're watching from for a free entry to win your very own Nintendo Switch. That's awesome. I might even try to comment my name to try to win one. Can somebody, okay, maybe not, I guess not. But you know what? You could win a Nintendo Switch, so make sure you let your friends know about this, share this post so we can all come together and have a great week at Virtual VBS. We've got some people gonna sing songs with us today, so make sure everybody stand up straight in your living room, sing loud, just like yesterday, so your neighbors will wonder what is going on in that house, and sing along with us as we sing, I am a C, I am a Christian. I am a C, I am a C-H. I am a church. That was phenomenal. And now we're going to learn our Bible verse, John 3, 16. This is a verse that talks about how much Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He died on the cross for you. As we learn this verse, think about how much Jesus loves you and remember to hide God's word in your heart. Let's all learn John 3, 16 together. Hi, everybody. We're going to be learning John 3, 16 today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. God sent his Son to die on the cross for our sins. So today, we're going to be repeating it, so we're just going to say it normal. Landon, can you repeat after me? I think so. Okay. John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. Shouldn't perish. But have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna have some fun with it again. We're gonna do our pirate voices. Arg? So, yep, so arg. You gotta repeat the arg. Arg. Alright, ready? John 3.16 John 3.16 For God so loved the world For God so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son That he gave his only begotten son That whosoever Whosoever Believeth in him Believeth in him Should not perish Should not perish But have everlasting life But have everlasting life Her 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 Okay, now we're gonna do I think I got this. We're gonna do a nerd voice. A nerd? Oh, so yeah. Just impersonate him. Right? You can do that. You ready? Yeah, let's just impersonate you. John 3.16. John 3.16. For God to love the world. For God to love the world. That he gave. That he gave. 
has only begotten son. Has only begotten son. That whosoever. That whosoever. Believeth in him. Believeth in him. Shall not perish. Shall not perish. But have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. Okay, good job. I can uh, untuck my shirt now. Please. Woo! Beginning to feel like my dad for a minute. All right. Oh, no. So now we're going to do... You got any ideas? Um, you know, I'm going to let you pick it. Oh, okay. That means you have no ideas. Yes. Okay. Sir. We're going to do a robot. Okay? That's a good idea. You got the robot? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Ready? And three, sixteen. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever. That whosoever. Believeth in him. Believeth in him. Should not perish. Should not perish. But have ever. But have ever. Lasting. Lasting. Life. Life. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Thank you all for repeating after us today. I hope you just really work on memorizing these verses. Have a great day. Man, thank you guys for helping us learn John 3.16 and reminding us how much Jesus loves each of us. Now we're going to be singing a song about how much Jesus loves us. So everybody stand up where you're at and sing aloud about Jesus' love for me and you. singing guys. Now Pastor Dylan is going to come share a lesson with us from God's Word. Make sure you're sitting up straight, hands in your lap, have a Bible open and ready to listen. This is the most important part of the day. So make sure you're listening and whatever it is God wants from you, make sure you're willing to say yes. Good evening boys and girls. My name is Pastor Dylan and I'm excited to be able to preach to you tonight about salvation. So Earlier this afternoon, I looked up what does salvation mean? It's kind of a bigger word, and Google had a great explanation for this, a good definition. It said, preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Some synonyms were a lifeline or preservation or conservation, means of escape. This next definition I thought was really good too. It said, deliverance from sin and its consequences. Believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Christ. What a great definition that is. Freedom from sin and its consequences by faith in Jesus Christ. So what do we need to do for salvation? That's what salvation is. It is a way for us to be saved from something. So if I were drowning and Pastor Ryan came and saved me, right? I was drowning. He swam out. 
he grabbed me, right, and he saved me. He would have saved me from drowning, right, from dying. He would be my savior from drowning, right? So Jesus Christ came and he saved us from sin. So we're going to look at that today, what salvation is. So what do we need salvation from? Just like in that illustration, I needed salvation from drowning. But what do you and I need salvation from? We see we need salvation from our sin because we are guilty of sin. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned, everybody, for all. That includes you, that includes me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3 Verse 10 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And then Romans 5, verse 12 says, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. Some people try to argue that, well, I'm not a sinner. I've done enough good to outweigh maybe the bad things I've done, or I've never done anything wrong. But the Bible clearly says in all three of those places that we're sinners, There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 5, 12 ends, for all have sinned. And unfortunately, we all fall within that definition and category of all, for all have sinned. That's what we need salvation from. We need salvation from our sin, but also not just our sin, but the penalty of sin, right? We see what salvation meant. It meant the the saving from not just the sin, but the consequences of it. And unfortunately, sin is and our wrong has consequences. Now, what's a sin? An easy thing we could look at is uh, lying, disobedience, not telling the truth, right? Not doing what we're told. The obedience means doing what we're told right away. Have you ever been told by your parents to go clean your room or maybe wash the car, clean out the car, or pick up your things, be nice to your siblings, stop watching TV, stop playing video games, whatever it may be, and you did not obey right away? Right? We know the song, I will obey the first time I'm told. I will obey when? Right away. If we don't obey right away, then it's not really obedience, right? So there's some things if we do them or don't do them, they're sin. They're breaking God's law, God's desires for us, all right? And we, by sinning, there's a consequence for our sin. There's a penalty for our sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. The cost, the penalty for our sin is death. And that's the wage, right? Just if I had to go to work and I worked and my payment, the cost of me working would be my wage. And the cost of our sin, unfortunately, is death. But not just death here on earth, but death in hell. Separation from God forever. Now, hell is a really bad place. There's fire, there's brimstone, there's weeping, there's wailing, there's gnashing of teeth. It's a place that nobody wants to go. It's never used as a positive thing. Hell is a bad place and nobody wants to go there. But the worst part about hell is that we are separated from God forever. Now, how long does forever last? A really long time. It never ends. And that's the worst part is that we will never be able to be with God. The one who created us, the one who loves us, will be separated from him because of our sin. And God didn't want that. That's the penalty. That's that's what he wanted to save us from. Not just sin, but the penalty of our sin. And that penalty is death. We see here, how did God provide salvation? So we see what we need salvation from. We need salvation. We need to be saved from our sin. Just like if I were drowning, I needed to be saved from drowning. It would do me no good to try to feed me. It would do me no good to try to give me a drink because I don't need a drink when I'm drowning. I don't need to be fed when I'm drowning. I need to be saved from drowning, right? And just like that, we need to be saved from our sin. Next, we see how did God provide salvation? We see we need it, but how did God provide it? Well, he provided it in his son, Jesus Christ. Well, you probably know the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now some of the big words in there, basically that verse means God loved you so much that he sent his only son. Now today is going to be Wednesday, okay? I'm recording this on Monday, all right? And my wife, her name's Kaylee, she's about to have a baby, all right, any day now. Her due date was Friday the 17th, okay? So Today's the 20th, and she has yet to have a baby. Now, that child is not even born yet, 
All right, her name's gonna be Clara, all right? And hopefully she looks like her mother, okay? So that way uh, she doesn't look like this, right? And, uh, but anyways, I love that child very much. And I don't even have a relationship with that child. I've never, I've never held her. I've never hugged her. I've never kissed her. I've never had a conversation with her. I've never been able to have affection towards her, right? Because she's not even here. She's not even born yet. But I can't even imagine losing that child or giving that child up for anything. And she's not even here yet, right? Much less... God gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Why? Because you and I sinned. We probably know the story of Adam and Eve, right? God created the heavens and the earth, right? The Bible says in the beginning, God created. We believe God created everything. He spoke it into existence. And then man, he formed out of the dust of the ground. And he created man and woman, right? He created them in his image. And he told them, you can eat of any fruit of the garden except do not eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And the woman was deceived by Satan to eat the fruit, and Adam partook as well. As we read earlier, wherefore, as by one man, Adam, that's that one man, sin entered into the world, and so death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. So because of our sin, we have to die. And that came through Adam. But Jesus Christ came to die for our sin. And God gave his son Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that whosoever is just like that word all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that whosoever is just like that. It's anybody. For whosoever, you or me, whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to die for us and God sent him. So we see here, he provided salvation in his son, Jesus. This is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. It's Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though I'm a sinner, even though you're a sinner, Jesus Christ still came. He died on a cross. He was buried and rose three days later for your sin, for my sin, so we didn't have to pay the penalty for it. And that penalty would be what? death, right? And Jesus Christ paid that penalty for us. That's how God provided salvation. Great verse here, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, for he hath made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ was perfect. We know the story. That's why we celebrate Christmas, right? Jesus Christ came. He was born. He lived a perfect life for 33 years he died on a cross in place for you. The Bible uses the word propitiation, right? The placement, the replacement for our sin. Jesus Christ became sin. He didn't know sin. He never sinned. He never did anything wrong. But he became sin for us so that way we might be saved. Jesus Christ died for you. That's the love that God showed to, to you. But God commended. He showed his love to you in the form of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you. We see here, God provided salvation through Jesus Christ, and God offers sinful man the gift of eternal life. We see here, Romans 6, 23, we read, we read it earlier. It says, for the wages, the cost, the wages of sin is death. But the best part of that verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, that verse doesn't say through Jesus Christ and fill in the blank. It doesn't say Jesus Christ and a church. It doesn't say Jesus Christ and a baptism, Jesus Christ and good works, and Jesus Christ and being kind. No, it says the salvation comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord, only, period, end of sentence. Jesus Christ only is the way. So we see here, God offers sinful man eternal life. life. A gift, though, has to be free. We, we read in that verse, right? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. A gift must be free. If I said, hey, I have a brand new car for you, all right? My car right now is in the shop, and it is broken down, and I was told that it probably is not going to work anymore, which is really sad because it's a cool red Camaro. Maybe I'll throw a picture up so you can see it. It's a cool car, but it's in the shop now, and I'm told it's not going to work anymore. So if someone rolled up to me and said, hey, here's a brand new 2021 Camaro, all right? And for $1,000, you can have this car. Now, that would be an amazing deal, and I'd probably take it, but it wouldn't be free. I'd have to pay taxes on that car, I'd have to put gas, insurance, all these things that cars cost, right? 
But if someone came to me and said, Dylan, here's a brand new 2020 Camaro, here, 2021 Camaro, here are the keys. Um, it comes no cost, car insurance covered, gas paid for the entire life of the car, and this car is gonna last a really long time, entire life of the car, insurance, everything, maintenance, whatever it is, here's the keys, all you gotta do is take it. Well, what a great deal, right? What a great gift. Your parents, when they give you gifts at Christmas time or for your birthday, they don't say, okay, um, we got these gifts on sale and now you've got to pay us a few dollars to get them. No, you, get, you, go, you go run down to the Christmas tree on Christmas morning, you rip open those presents, right? And your parents aren't making sure you're, they're collecting some money from you before you open those gifts. No, they're completely free. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Saved us from what? From sin, from the penalty of sin. It's not by works of righteousness. It's nothing good we can do. It is merely by his gift and his love that he saved us and came and died on the cross. Jesus Christ did for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's nothing you can do to earn salvation. The Bible doesn't say the wages of sin is death and. It doesn't say the wages of sin is baptism. It doesn't say the wages of sin is going to church. It says the wages of sin is death and Jesus Christ came and died for you to pay that wage, to pay that cost, to pay that penalty for your sin and for my sin. So a gift must be free, but it must be personally accepted as well. For me to receive a gift, I have to take it. I have to extend my hand, so to speak, and take those keys for that brand new car. Salvation is not a reward for the righteous, but a gift for the guilty. It's not a reward for the good things you've done. It is, it is rather a gift from Jesus Christ, from God, for you to accept. So how do you accept salvation? Well, here's what I did. When I was eight years old, it was Father's Day, June 20th of 2004. I was eight years old. It was Sunday night. I'd gone to church, came home, and I remember feeling convicted about my sin and not sure where I would spend the rest of eternity, where I would go when I died. And I was worried about it. And so I talked to my dad. I don't remember what the preacher preached that night. I just remember feeling a burden about where I was going to spend eternity. And my dad showed me the same things I'm showing you, that God loves you, that Jesus died for me, and that if I put my trust in him and him alone, he would save me and take me to heaven when I die. And that wasn't by my works, but rather my faith in Jesus and him alone. That's what I did. As just an eight-year-old boy, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and him alone. So how do we accept it? First of all, we have to trust in Jesus Christ alone. For as our only hope for salvation. Trust in Jesus Christ alone. There's nothing else that can be added to it. It can't be trusting in Jesus Christ and you. It can't be trusting in Jesus Christ and a church. It can't be trusting in Jesus Christ and some other action. It has to be Jesus Christ and him alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman, no man any part of mankind, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 3, 16, it doesn't give us any other option than through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, Jesus, hath everlasting life. So we have to trust in Jesus Christ alone. Secondly, we have to ask for it. The Bible says, Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And as an eight-year-old boy, I remember kneeling down. It was like 9.59 at Sunday night, kneeling down and praying, saying, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know there's a penalty for my sin. Would you come into my heart and save me and take me to heaven when I die? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All that to say, you got to believe in your heart. In a few minutes, I'm going to ask you, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, if there's never been a moment in your life that you are 100% sure that you asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and save you, to take away your sin, to take you to heaven when you die, I'm going to ask you to do that. But I'm, I'm going to say a prayer and if you repeat that prayer and it doesn't, and you just say it, and you don't mean it in your heart, it's just like saying words you don't mean. 
I'm sure we've all got upset at times and said things we didn't mean, got mad at somebody, yelled at them, and said things we didn't really mean. And you could do that today. You could pray a prayer simply because you, you were asked to. Or you can believe in your heart. The Bible says we have to believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. So how long does salvation last? Well, the Bible says it lasts forever. Everlasting life. It lasts eternally. The Bible says these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, right? That believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The Bible says we can know for sure that it's going to last forever. And once we're saved, we're always saved. We have eternal security. We see that's what eternal means, right? It lasts forever. John 10, 27 through 29, this is Jesus talking. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them everlasting life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So we see here, once we're in the hand of Jesus, we can never run out. We can never be plucked out. Once we're saved, we're always saved. And it's so easy. God didn't make it hard on you. God didn't make it a difficult task. All you have to do is put your faith and trust in Jesus and him alone. So will you do that today? Would you do that right now? Would you believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he is? That he's the only way to heaven? See, God loves you. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to die and go to hell. You need him for salvation though. And he supplied a way for you to have it. And all you need to do is believe in him and ask. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna lead a prayer. And this prayer doesn't save you. There's no magic in these words. It's what you believe in your heart. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you're four years old, you understand what I'm saying today. Whether you're some, a parent watching or grandparent, it doesn't matter how old you are. You can accept Jesus Christ right now. Let's pray together. Repeat these words after me if you believe them. But not to me, but to the Lord. And say, Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know there's a penalty for my sin. I'm asking you to come into my heart and save me and take me to heaven when I die. I trust in you and you alone for my salvation from sin and its penalty. Please save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and meant that tonight, please let us know. We'd love to rejoice with you in that decision. If you're a kid watching, let your parents know. Talk to them about it. Share this good news with them. I hope tonight, if you haven't before, you accepted Jesus Christ and were saved. It's so easy to do. Just trust in him. Call out to him. I hope you did that. Thanks for watching tonight. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. It's me you want, gorilla. Oh! How dare you say that about my mother? <laughs> no, these are not my children. <laughs> Enough talk. Let's fight. <laughs> 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 Gorilla, you have to face these guns. Good. Okay, Camille. Thank you. That was pretty scary, wasn't it? It sure was. Why did you save me from that gorilla? Well, I couldn't let the gorilla kill you, could I? Yeah, I guess. Um, when we get back, I'm sure I'll talk to my dad. He'll get you whatever you want when we get back home. No, I didn't save you because I wanted something from you. But weren't you scared? Of course I was. But I care about you, and I didn't want to see you get hurt. Just like Jesus loves me and cares about me. He wants me to treat others the same way. I don't think anyone has ever cared about me that way before. Well, Jesus does. He cares so much that he sacrificed himself on a cross so that you could be free from your sin. He did that for me? He did, and he promises that if you accept him 
and pray and ask him to forgive you from all your sins, he will. Would you like to do that now? I think I would. Let's come this way. Oh, man. We would have been toast if you hadn't come in right at that last second. Thank you. You would have been toast. But I've been here for 12 years. And I've mm. faced the worst. The unspeakable. Mm. The bears. And the lions. And the giant spiders. Giant spiders? The gorilla that I ran off earlier. That's not the first time he's seen me. Hmm. But even worse, there's natives. There's natives? Going around everywhere. They hide behind trees. Just waiting to attack. Are they cannibals? I think they are. Uh, have you ever seen them? Well, I've actually never seen them, but I know they're there. Hmm. It's like they're always watching. Hmm. Always watching. Hey, guys, what? Chamomile has some pretty amazing news. What? Yeah? What's that? I just accepted Christ as my savior. That's fantastic. Awesome. That's wonderful news. Guys, where's Doug? He's always disappearing. It's a good question. I have no idea. Well, there is something that I know about Doug. Earlier, when I was walking in the woods, I saw him, and he had a compass and a map. What? Yeah, and he was talking on a phone. What? He has a phone? Yeah, and it works. And I think he was the one who crashed our plane. He crashed our... what? Oh, none of that makes sense. All right, he's a strange guy. He's really odd, but I can't see him doing that. Why would he do that to us? Why would he put us here? The crown of life. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. The Some sort of crown of life. Crown of life? What? What's that? Legend has it that in the midst of the jungle, when you climb up the tallest tree, there you'll find the crown of life. Hmm. And whoever places it on their head will have eternal Life. That means they'll never die. That's just a jungle legend. There's thousands of those. But, I don't know. I don't trust him. But the thing is, he doesn't know that we know. So, here's what we're going to do. Hit him on the head. No. We're going to play dumb. If he can play dumb, we can play dumb. We'll just act natural like nothing happened. And at the first opportunity we get, we're going to try and steal his phone. But, till then, just act natural, like we don't know a thing. Right, guys? Got it. Okay. Yeah. Hey, guys. What in the world? Doug is a bad guy? I cannot believe this. This is crazy. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared. But we can come back tomorrow to find out what happens next to our friends in the jungle. What's Doug going to do? We'll find out tomorrow. But right now, we're going to sing one of my favorite songs at Vacation Bible School, the Cranbox song.
job guys, you guys are doing great at that song. One of my favorite VBS songs. I hope you guys had a great time today at Virtual VBS and that you learned something about how much Jesus loves you. Now make sure you check the description to find out how you can be entered into a drawing to win your very own Nintendo Switch. And share this so that your friends can join us tomorrow for Vacation Bible School. Thank you so much for coming today. I hope you had a great time and we will see you tomorrow at Virtual VBS.